Hello everyone, my name is Chef Kent Rathman and I work here in Dallas, Texas and this is my assistant Donnie. Donnie, tell me, uh, you work, you work uh, where do you work? What's going on? Oh, I've been a line cook for five years now and I'm a student at Dallas College. Yeah, good for you. Stick with it. It's a lot of fun. It's a good career. Takes you some places, but it's hard work. Uh, you ever, do you like shrimp? Yes, sir. Yeah? Well, we're going to do a little shrimp recipe. One of the great things about this recipe is it works great with chicken, steaks, uh, lamb, whatever. I mean, it's really kind of a beautiful cilantro and jalapeno lime marinade. It works really well on a lot of things. So let's get started by working with the shrimp first. So we have some uh, really beautiful 12 and under shrimp. You know how they do the shrimp, right? So like if you go to, if you go to a store, you know, you see 1620 or uh, U10. Do you know what that means? You know Not I mean? exactly. So under 10, U10 means that there's under 10 shrimp per pound, which means they're bigger. So the smaller the number, the bigger the shrimp. So if you get 16 to 20 size shrimp, what does that mean? Um, 16 to 20 per pound, right? Right. So when you go to the store, you're looking for the big shrimp, you're looking for U10s or under, and these are, these are nice size. Check it out. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off the tail, just like this. We don't want to do that. Uh, we want this to be super easy. We're going to use a couple of nice skewers right here. So I'm going to kind of show you the trick here, and then I'm going to let you do the next four on here. We're going to do a nice skewer of six shrimp. What we want to do is we want to make sure that this is really kind of tight in a circle like that. And we're going to put our shrimp skewer right through here. And then we're going to put all these on in the same direction, okay? Okay. We want to make sure that they all look really good. All right. We got our ingredients ready to go here. We're almost ready with our skewer. Now, you know, this skewer is pretty, it's pretty good skewer because you notice that it's flat, right? Sometimes the skewers are round. And what happens is sometimes the, the food moves around on the skewer. So I kind of like to take the skewer and, and do a second skewer through here, especially if they're round. And the reason we do that is to keep this thing real flat. And that's kind of one of those little tricks that we can put on here. And so this is going to stay real flat when we get ready to saute this or grill it. In this case, we're going to, we're going to grill it in a griddled cast iron skillet. But you can do these at home on a grill, wood fire, charcoal, uh, stainless steel grill, gas grill, whatever, right? All right, so let's take this. Let's put this right back on here. And uh, let's clean up our area here. All right, you ready to go to the blender? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to give you some limes. I'm going to have you start squeezing some fresh lime juice in here. All right, so you, you know how to do that. We're going to use three limes, okay? And uh, guys, fresh limes, please. The little green plastic thing, mm -hmm. that's not fresh lime juice. I know it says it is, but it's not. So go to the trouble, make the nice marinade, use the fresh lime juice. There you go. You're going to keep going with that. Okay, we have some fresh garlic cloves. Once again, you know, spend some time and peel your garlic, make a nice, make a nice marinade, okay? We're going to use uh, four or five cloves here. It depends on how much garlic you like. There's no real uh, thing. It could get too garlicky, I guess. Um, maybe. I don't know. Uh, we're going to use a little shallot. Let me keep half of this for later. All right, so now we have garlic, shallots. We got lime juice. We need a little oil going in here. All right. Hey, Chef, why don't you use olive oil? Well, you know, uh, that's a good question, man. That's a good setup. So we're going to be grilling on a pretty hot skillet, or we would be grilling on a pretty hot grill. Have you ever used olive oil and then put it on a really hot fire? You yes, know what sir. happens? It sizzles. It, well, it, it, it kind of starts on fire. Yeah. Olive oil is not really a great oil to be cooking at high temperatures because it's a low temperature oil, not to mention it's expensive. So I always suggest canola oil, peanut oil, or grapeseed oil. And these are oils that are designed to be cooked at high temperatures so they don't flare up as much and they don't soot. Like olive oil, when it catches on fire, it turns everything black and it gets sooty and it's, it's not so nice. Again, it's also expensive. So if you want to do olive oil, save that for later. Use the utilitarian oil like canola oil, uh, grapeseed oil, or peanut oil, and then drizzle the olive oil on at the end. I think that's a better way to go. Okay? Gotcha. So uh, 
we're going to use a little fresh parsley. The recipe actually calls for spinach, but I was in my garden this morning, and I thought, you know what? This parsley is looking pretty awesome. And the reason this is in the recipe, and the reason the spinach is in the recipe, is just to give us a really, really beautiful color. It, it's really bright green, and it adds a lot of color to it. Parsley does the same thing. So it's not really going to flavor it, nor would the spinach, but we're looking for the color. All right. Now we have some fresh cilantro, okay? And uh, believe it or not, man, we're just going to cut the end of the the end of the stem off. And guess what, man? Boom, right in. Okay, we're going to use that whole thing, stem and all. You know, uh, a lot of people don't realize that you can use uh, you can use the stem as a garnish. Like a lot of times, I'll take this kind of stem like this, cilantro, and we'll just cut it, and then cut it like a chive. Just like that. And uh, man, I tell you, that in a salad dressing, awesome. Holds on a lot of flavor, little crunch, little color. It's pretty good. So the moral of this story is don't throw away the stems, OK? <laughs> All right, we ready? Let's see. We got shallots. We got garlic. I think we're missing something. What are we missing? We're in Texas. Got to have some heat, right? Right. I picked these in my garden this morning, man. Fresh, fresh jalapenos, and I think uh, now you know that uh, you know that the jalapeno and most peppers like this. Do you know where most of the heat resides in peppers like this? The seeds. Right on. So, if you're sensitive to spice, you can cut this out, cut the seed pot out, throw it away. But since I'm not, are you sensitive to spice? Moderate. Moderate? Yeah. Well, this is a little pepper. So, hey, you know what that means. We're, we're going in. Okay, we're just going to put the whole thing in there. Trust me on this. Okay, it'll be good. All right, you about ready? Yes, sir. You're going to blend. Let's see what we got here. So, we're going to start this up, and we're just going to do a nice puree. We have our shrimp ready to go. Okay. We got our puree. Look at that. All right, here it comes. Nice and green, just like that, okay? Now, we're going to set that back here. Now, this is going to marinate for about an hour, okay? You don't want to marinate this overnight because, do you know why? Why? Lime juice. So, you know, you know what ceviche is, right? No. Ceviche is a process of taking raw fish or raw shrimp and marinating it in things like lime juice or grapefruit juice, uh, chilies. And what happens is the acid from the lime juice begins to cook the fish, right? So whenever you're using acid in a, in a recipe or whenever you're using a lot of salt in a recipe, you have to be very careful because the amount of time that that product is on the shrimp or on the meat does affect the product, right? In this case, an hour will be perfect. Um, overnight, the shrimp will actually start to kind of cook on their own from the lime juice. So you want to be careful with that. It's not, a, it's not a killer, but at the same time, if you want beautiful, really fresh shrimp, you want to just marinate this for an hour or so. We got to season this up. So, Hey, Chef, why didn't you season it before you marinated it? Well, that's actually a very good question. So for the same reason, we don't want to marinate it for very long because the lime juice will cook it. Same thing happens with salt. Right? You know how they cure ham and pork chops and bacon? With what? With, um, With salt. Right? Yeah. So salt also has an adverse effect on food. If you leave it on too long, it starts to cure it. Right? It starts to dry it out. It starts to kind of pull the moisture out. So we always season right before we cook. Okay? So now we're cooking inside today. We've got this really cool cast iron skillet over here with the lifted grill in here. So this could be done on a charcoal grill. It could be done on a gas grill. I have a pretty fun little line of spices here. So we have four in the line. We're going to use two. This is the steak and chop salt. This is a lemon pepper. This is the sticky pig. And this is the barbecue rub. So this barbecue rub, my dad taught me when I was a kid. So it's got like lots of pepper and lots of paprika and sugar. And it's really good for barbecued shrimp, barbecued salmon, barbecued ribs, chicken, whatever. And the sticky pig is really cool because it's kind of a it's kind of a mix between the steak and chop salt 
and the barbecue rub, and it's got topinamba sugar, which has got a, a real kind of texture to it, so it's real granular. So it kind of gets in your mouth, and you can kind of get a texture from it. So that's kind of cool. So we have some of that right here, and uh, we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of this all the way down the shrimp. And uh, we're going to do both sides here. Okay. Now here's the barbecue spice, just like that. Okay, and the barbecue spice actually doesn't have a whole lot of salt in it, which means that you can actually use this for a dry rub overnight, where the other ones have kind of a lot of salt in them, and so if you use too much of that overnight, then you're going to get back to that curing your meat thing, which is not really where we want to be. Okay, so a little sticky pig to finish up. So the other thing I got is I picked all these tomatoes and peppers today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few of these peppers. I'm going to hand this off to you with just a little bit of oil here. I want you to kind of just, just kind of rub these around and lay these on the outside of our skillet. And I'm going to have you just kind of rub, make sure they got all the oil there. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little sticky pig on this too. Okay, just like that. And this is just for the garnish, right? So we're going to, we got this beautiful cast iron plate over here. And by the way, this doesn't take very long. This is, you know, maybe three to four minutes. So Donnie and I are going to chat while the shrimp's cooking. But we're seasoned. We're ready to go. Uh, we're going to put our... Right there. All right, so we're going to get those ready to go. So just lay those in there. All right. Yeah, we get a little closer there. There you go. And then uh, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start kind of you know taking care of our plate so we like we like a lot of color so we got some red we got some tomatoes that are a little bit oh wow look at that I forgot about that guy in there let's let's oil that up in there that's a little green pepper so while you're doing that I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting tomatoes kind of lay them in here so what do you think I'm thinking those are pretty close what do you think got a great color to yeah. it so you feel how you feel how firm those are getting just kind of give them a little touch there these are getting really close okay the one thing we don't want to do we don't want to overcook these i would rather let them continue to cook a little bit if they're a little under and they're they're right on the money right now so actually our peppers are the ones that are needing some more time so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take this off we're going to turn this off because this will keep cooking that's the other thing nice about cast iron is it'll hold its heat for a while so we're going to put these peppers right in the middle I'm going to let you kind of mess with that uh, as we need what we're going to do is we're going to bring this guy up here right here like this all right we're going to lay our shrimp in here get this cleaned up here a little bit we're going to lay that right in here we're going to pull out the skewers Okay, just like that. Get rid of these. Got to make our board look good, man. We're on camera. <laughs> Dude, we got to make this look good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of keep turning these. See how they're kind of getting a nice grill mark? Can you hear them start to kind of crackle? Right. So what's happening there is that the skin is starting to blister. I'm actually going to turn this back on and keep that going for a second. So now we have... Uh, a really pretty plate here. How long did that take? Four minutes? Nothing. Not long. Okay. I think for the end of this, we might also take just another fresh little piece of lime. And I'm just going to, we don't even need that. We're just going to cut right off the side of the lime so we don't get any seeds here. And we're just going to kind of do a little fresh lime juice across the top, just like that. And then I think we'll take our really nice blistered peppers. And we'll lay those in here just like that. We'll make a nice, beautiful plate. I got to tell you, man, I don't know about you, but that's looking pretty good. What do you think? A little grilled shrimp, margarita style, a little roasted pepper. It's nice. Beautiful. Hey, man, I want to thank you for helping me out. Have a good day. Stay safe and be nice to people.